My name is uh, Bill Waberson. I'm a nuclear engineer. I work at Savannah Riverside. Um, you're from South Aiken High School. The, are you? What grade are you? Ninth, Ninth grade. Freshman. So the. Uh, what schools did you go to? A lot of uh, the Kennedy. Kennedy and the, um, I've go to a lot of schools around the area. I don't know if I had seen you before. We're gonna today. We're gonna take a journey to the center of the atom. What's in the center of the atom? The nucleus, protons and neutrons. So you see electrons around there. But we're gonna erase the electrons because we only really care about the nucleus. Electrons are important, but they just follow what the what the protons tell them to do. So we're gonna just focus on the nucleus. This uh, lecture is sponsored by the Citizens for Nuclear Technology Awareness. They are a local group here in Aiken, headquartered in Aiken, and the American Nuclear Society. It's a national organization, but we have a group here in Augusta and Aiken. I've been here about 50 years, so. And uh, I helped create this presentation, so my name's up there as well. Let's start. We only have a few slides, and then we're going to get to our physical activities. Um, so I want, I'm going to ask you questions. I want you to jump in with answers, OK? There are two parts to an atom. We have the nucleus and the electron cloud. What is in the nucleus? Protons, Protons and neutrons. Excellent. Um, and in the electron cloud, what do we have? Electrons. electrons. Now, the protons have a mass of about one atomic mass unit, and the neutrons are about the same, one atomic mass unit. Electrons are really tiny, about one eighteen hundredth of that size. So the whole mass of the atom is mostly protons and neutrons. So that's the mass. Um, from a charge standpoint, protons have a charge of a plus one. Neutrons are neutral. That's how they get their name. And electrons are minus one. So let's think about protons and neutrons. Let's say the red ping pong ball is a proton and the blue is a neutron, okay? So can I bring two protons together easily? Why? Why can't I? The answer was that uh, no, we can't because they're both positive charges. Uh, like things repel, right? Now say I have a neutron. Can I bring a neutron and a proton together? Yes, sir. I can because this doesn't have a charge. It's not opposite, but it doesn't have a charge. So as they get close together, when they get to a certain distance, the strong nuclear force takes over and binds them together, so they stick. Can I take a proton and stick it to this neutron now? That's right. You can stick it together. And the neutron acts like a glue that holds the atom's nucleus together. Does that make sense? Now, if you have two, if you don't have enough glue, say I had two blocks of wood and I didn't have enough glue, and I stuck, stuck them together, would they stay together? No, they won't. If I don't have enough glue, right, they'll break apart. What if I had them six inches apart and filled the whole middle with glue? Would they stick together? No, not really. The glue itself will break apart. And atoms are the same way. If they have too many or too few neutrons, they break apart. And that's called radioactivity, and that's where radiation comes from. Does that make sense? So we're going to uh, show you some of that here in a little while. This is the periodic table. <coughs> it has an unusual shape, kind of like a U. And there's a piece down below, the lanthanides and actinides. You can see <coughs> how they, uh, they normally would fit in here. But we keep them on the bottom of the page because it fits on a page better. I'll show you how they normally will fit in there. Why is it shaped like a U like that? Why, why is it in that unusual shape? Does anybody know? The, it's, a, it's based on the electrons. Do you, do you remember that? I think you guys should have learned this uh, earlier in school. The, it's based on the electrons. Over here on one side, they have one extra electron in the outer shell. These have a filled outer shell. These are one short. So they're arranged in families of electrons. So they have these, it's based on electrons. Remember, we said electrons don't matter in this class. We're talking about the nucleus. So we have another chart that we use. But the reason is we have another chart is because of something called an isotope. <coughs> have you heard of the is an isotope before? You should have heard that earlier in school. And what that is, is if you look at this hydrogen up here in the corner, hydrogen one, it has one proton. But you can, there are more than one hydrogen. There's hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, hydrogen 4, and so on. If these were Scrabble tiles, they would stack up on top of each other on this chart, and you couldn't see them very effectively. So we use a different chart to show you that. And we're going to do that as a hands-on exercise in a minute. OK, here's an example of isotopes. If you look at this, we have a, a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. See that? How many does this one have? Hydrogen 2. How many? The protons does it have? 
one and one electron. Hydrogen three, how many protons does it have? One and one electron. We just add a little more glue on it here, and it gets twice as heavy. Remember, these are this weighs almost nothing, so it's twice as heavy. Hydrogen three weighs three times as much. It has too much glue and becomes radioactive. Tritium is radioactive. We uh, recycle tritium here at, in Aiken, uh, South Carolina, at Sedona site. This is a periodic table that demonstrates the, I, the, the types of isotopes that naturally occur. Hydrogen has hydrogen one and two naturally. You can see the pie chart. Most of it's hydrogen one, a little bit of hydrogen two. Helium has helium three and four. If you look down here on mercury right here, there's lots of colors in that pie chart. So it's just a different way to look at the periodic uh, table. All right, there's only two slides left. And so this slide is t instruction, and the next one's a, a kind of a quiz. So you're going to pay attention on this piece here. This is a standard nuclear notation. <coughs> the, this is the chemical symbol, uh, goes into the place of the X. The Z is the number of protons, and the A is the, how much the mass is. And the mass is actually the protons plus the neutrons. So if you want to figure out how many neutrons, you have to subtract Z from A. So we're going to sh show you that down here in the bottom. We have carbon, 6, carbon, 12. So carbon is the symbol. 6 is what? That's atomic number, which is the number of protons. So how many neutrons are there? We take 12 and subtract 6. 6. Very good. So here, on 6 carbon 13, how many protons? No, how many protons? 6. And how many neutrons? 7. All right. On 6 carbon 14, how many protons? 6. And how many neutrons? 8. Now you can see the 6 and the C always go together, so sometimes we remove the 6 because it's redundant. All right, we're going to do a little quiz. And then we're going to get up and do, ex do a physical exercise. How many protons are there in one hydrogen one? Say it loud. One. 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 Very good. One. You got it. How many neutrons are in three lithium seven? Say it loud. No. No. I heard it over here. Four. Four. Remember, you have to subtract. There are already three protons, and the whole mass is the, them to get added together, so you have to subtract for neutrons. Four. How many proton, protons ate oxygen 17? Eight. That's the, that's the number on the bottom. And how many neutrons are in one hydrogen one? Zero. Very good. I, I, most of you said zero. Very, very good. Okay. Zero. So next thing we do is everybody stand up, and we're all going to come over here. <coughs> I want you to stand on this side of the table, away from me. Just stand on all these three sides. Come on, everybody. Almost got everybody. Move around a little bit so that folks can, can gather up. So I'm going to hand you these tiles. You take one and pass them down. And I'm going to hand you these. Whoop. I'm going to throw them at you. The, um, here, you can start passing them around. So take one and pass them down. And everyone kind of gather up. This is the periodic table. It's an extended version of it. So we put the lanthanides and the actinides in their proper place in the middle. Um, on the other one, you saw it housed down below. But you can see how this wouldn't fit on a page well, so this is it. This is an unusual periodic table because at the bottom we have a number of the list of isotopes. I have some blank spaces in here, and I want you to fill them in. If you have uranium, it goes here. If you have mercury, it goes here. If you have copper nesium, it goes here. The rest of them are blank, and you have to fill them in. So let's see if you guys can fill them in, and then I'll try to help you if you get stuck. So go ahead. Very good. Excellent. You guys are you guys are doing great. All right, helium up there. One goes right there. Goes right in the corner. Up, up one. There you go. Right next to six. 
There you go. That's where potassium is. Perfect. We're missing, we're missing some magnesium. It goes way over here. Put, all right, and we got two over here. You guys have the two in there? Are there? You have copper nesium goes right here. Uranium will go here. Who has uranium? Argon. All right, and argon is the last spot. It's a noble gas, so it goes over there. So you filled in the periodic table. Now what I'm going to show you is we have other colored tiles that represent the isotopes. If you look, let's, there's a camera behind, so let's let everyone else that are, that's on the web see what we're doing. The, what you'll see is the numbers on the top of these uh, white tiles are not whole numbers. They're an average. Can you see how it's like uh, silicon is 28.1, uh, uh, chlorine is 35.4. So you can see it's an average. And what it is, it's an average of the naturally occurring isotopes. These are all the isotopes of mercury. They stack up underneath that tile. These are all of the ones for uranium. There are 23 for uranium, 40 for mercury, 4 for copper nesium. And there are different colors. See the different colors? Green represents stable elements. Blue represents long-term. Blue and red are radioactive. Blue are long-term radioactive. Red are short-term. They're so unstable they don't even last a second. And so you can see there's some symmetry to the colors here. What we're going to do is we're going to put the tiles on there. 299 isotopes are on this table in the center of the room. We're going to go, you guys are going to go try to stack those up underneath the white tile. Do you remember the tile you had? Yes. You Use that tile and, and we'll come on over here. I'll show you what we're going to do. Follow me. So there are 299 of these. And if you look, I'm holding one of them up. It is 8 oxygen 12. So how many protons are in, in it? Eight. And so if you look, each of these tables has a number on it, and we're going to stack it at the eight position. So we want to take all of these tiles and sort them by their number of protons and put them on those, on those tables. So go ahead, and, and I'll tell you the next step after that. So go ahead and do that. So just reach in and grab a stack. Just grab a stack and then, and then uh, place them. And when your stack is done, grab some more. Grab a whole pile of them and just move on. There you go. Chlorine's in the right spot. Neon is in the wrong spot. That's, let's move that neon to its right spot. Here, put that. It goes in. That would go there, perfect. Yep, that's right. Lithium is three. There we go. Just grab a whole bunch. You don't need to sort them on the table. Grab them and spread out. The bottom number, yep, the number of protons. We're going to sort them by the number of protons, which is sorting them by the element. I got one went under here. It's unstable. He, it's unstable healing. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to find that. That's the secret one, the neutron. I'll hold it. Thank you. Yep, we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay, when, you at, when all the tiles are off the table and you are done with your stack, stand by your number the, of the element that you placed on the table. Stand by your element. And if, and if you don't remember, stand by one. And we just need one person at each element. And so we'll wait till we're done sorting. Someone's over here on our argon and our potassium. We'll need someone over there. Potassium is all the way over here, number 19. What I want you to do when you're there, 
stack them up in order with the lowest mass number on the top and the highest mass number on the bottom. Stack them up in order. And when you're done with that, let me know, and we'll put it on the periodic table. The lowest number on top, the highest on the bottom. Stack them in a vertical stack. And when you're done, let me know, and we'll put them on the periodic table. Come on over. You got boron ready? And so set them with the white tile on top. And then stick around and help others make sure they get them right. So you have the lithium. Put them under the, uh, the, the white tile on top. So there you go, just like that. Perfect. And put it back in its spot. So when you're done with yours, and the, the higher ones like argon and potassium, and sometimes it's easier to make two stacks so you don't drop them because the stacks get pretty tall. So we'll come on over, and we'll then stay over here when you're done. Stay over on this side of the room. And then we can stand over here that way we don't block the camera. So as we're going, we're close. You can see all the people with the light elements got theirs done faster because there's not many isotopes. It's not near as hard to hem up. Right. Who's got the carbon? They're going to have a hard time pushing their carbon in there. Do you have carbon or that's sulfur? Sulfur right there. There you go. Looks good. Looks really good. That's a way to help each other. It's hard to get those inner ones in when the others are already filled. What do you have, neon? It's all the way over there. You can step around. You might be able to get in beside them. How are we doing? That's good enough stack. It's that, 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 there were none next to it. So, Who has the aluminum? I do. Yeah, there. So you're starting to see the stacks get pretty tall. There are 299 stacks or, or isotopes just up to potassium. Mercury alone has 40 isotopes as part of uh, that we've discovered. So we're almost done. Great teamwork, guys. You got a periodic table t-shirt on? <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, so now you look. What do you see? There's some symmetry to the colors, isn't there? There's kind of green in the middle, blue on either sides, and then red on the top and the bottom. Uranium has no green, but you can see there's a lot of isotopes. Now, say I wanted to learn about this magnesium right here. This is not a very useful chart for that, is it? Because it's under the stack. And so that's why you see this as we always do the averages when you see this as a periodic table. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another exercise. We'll use the chart that nuclear people use. This is really for chemists. We're going to use the chart of nuclides. So we're all going to step over here. And again, stay on that side of the table. And I'll, I'll stay over here and describe how the table works. So up, this, up the x or up the y axis is the number of protons. And that also corresponds to the element name. Along the x axis is the number of neutrons. And so we're going to take all of those tiles and we're going to put them on here. And we'll do some examples. I have one hydrogen one as a disk, a tile. How many protons? One. How many neutrons? Zero. Very good. So put that, somebody put that in that position. One proton, zero neutrons on the chart. No, one pro no, there you go. No, that's good. You got it. Here's a neutron. A neutron actually exists in nature. It's radioactive. It's blue colored. I started to tell you, the, I think I told you before, the green are stable, the blue are radioactive long-lived, and the red are unstable. So this is a, a, a radioactive item. We'll put it, how many protons does a neutron have? Zero. zero. How many neutrons? One. One. So put that in its spot. We have magnesium, 38. So how many protons? 12. How many neutrons? 26. 26, very good. So, so we come over here to the 12, magnesium. 
and we come over until we get, that's where you have to do the math. So we come over, what do we come to? 26, right there. And so, and that's where that, is. and so what I'd like you to do is the element that you had, pick up your tiles and let's place them all on here. Leave the glued ones uh, over there. And leave the white tiles as well, because we don't need those. Those are just averages. Now, potassium, it might be easier to come around here, because it's the very top. So it would be a lot easier to do it from this side. Sodium. There we go. And, it, and if you need help, ask each other or ask, uh, ask me and I'll help you. So the bottom number is the, uh, is the, is the y axis. Okay. And this one, you do the subtraction, you come over to that on the x axis. So, how, how do you want us to bottom? Like you so, this one be 13. What's the subtraction? 31 minus 13 is. 21. You get them over there. 18. The, so, you come to 13. And 18, where they correspond on the on the thing, you place them, and you'll see they'll all go in order when you place them. That'll be easy. Okay. We have a bunch of aluminum over here and one magnesium. <laughs> They're doing really good. That's excellent. If you've done yours, there's still there's some extra aluminum and uh, some magnesium. So if you've already done yours, grab some more. There you go. And you'll see they count up. See, 50, 51, 52, and they count this way as well. So it should help you figure out if you have them in the right spot. And if you're done, uh, let's uh, let the camera see it so we can open up this side of the table if you've already done yours. There's a, that's, that's all right. It's a noble gas. Don't let the nobility. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Good job, you guys are putting it together well. Looks like if you've already, got, there's some silicon and some magnesium over here, so if you're done, go in and grab those. They don't slide through easier. It's easier to place them than slide them, because they don't slide through well. If you finish yours, go ahead and step on the the bottom side of the chart so others so the camera can see what you guys are doing. Looks like your magnesium's there, like a little catawopper in the middle. There you go. There we go, there we go. I think this one comes over here, right? Because they count up. You see how they count up? See how that goes? They count in this direction as well. You're close. You're just well, I don't know. They're, they look like they may be... Something's wrong with those. That's supposed to be missing. In, re in the real world, they... They actually just discovered it. After we made this, they discovered it. It hadn't been discovered yet. Yeah. So it looks like there's some phosphorus. Something doesn't look right with it, though. The Are we missing one somewhere? There, we're missing 
Colossians 3.3. All right. That's, it's the right spot. They count it. We still got a bunch more to go. We're, you're really close now. We're missing a phosphorus 33, it looks like. I see it's in the wrong end. See, it's on the end here. Go ahead and move that one over into the hole. There you go. Not there. Right in the middle. All right. Now we're missing something. Something's wrong. There's a bunch of neon missing. There they are. It he should, ran, if he ran out of arms is what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so as we're placing the last few neons, let's talk about the patterns you see. You should see a lot of different patterns. What patterns do you see? Staircase There's a staircase of green up the middle. All right, what other patterns do you see? S say that again. The blue, the blue is on each side of the green, right, right on either side of the green line. Any other patterns you see? There's a lot, there's not, there's uh, red on either side of the blue, and there's not as many red on one side as the other. It's kind of a pattern. How about counting? Did they count in certain directions? They, they count up, and they count left to right as well. And then diagonally, they're a common number. You see how that is in there? The, this green line is called the line of stability. Remember we said the green ones are stable, and they form a line. That's the perfect balance of glue. Remember we talked about that? As the glue gets too much or too little, you get away from that line of stability, the atom becomes radioactive. The further you get, it becomes very unstable. Does that make sense? And so what happens is what nuclear scientists do, nuclear scientists and nuclear engineers, we discover things that are naturally not on the line of stability and uh, try to understand how they uh, work in nature. Or we push something off the line of stability and as it comes back, we utilize the energy it gives off as it comes back to the line of stability. Everything's trying to get to the line of stability. Well, I'll give you some examples. Someone point at carbon-14. Carbon-14. Car has anybody ever heard of carbon-14 before? It's called radio dating. What they do is it's a naturally occurring form of carbon. It lasts about 5,700 years. Um, and so we can tell... The, how old a fossil is by how much carbon-14 is in it. And so they use it for archaeology. And so when something dies, it stops taking in carbon-14, and they can tell how long ago it died. So they can tell up to 60,000 years ago how old it is. Uh, fluorine-18. Fluorine-18 is right there. It is on the other side of the... Um, it has a very short half-life, but we create it by pushing... Uh, material off the line of stability, and when it comes back, it gives off energy. And we use that in a machine called a positron emission tomography machine, which is a, a diagnosis machine in medicine. And we'll uh, show you some pictures of some medical things later. So we use that in medicine to where you can determine uh, things that are happening inside your body. So we, all nuclear technologies use this line of stability. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So what we're going to do now is we're going to break up into teams. How many folks are? We're going to break up into five teams. So you about four to five per team. So you guys break up into teams, and I'm going to select an isotope, and we're going to go uh, see uh, some of the functions of that. So let's break up into teams. You, you guys pick four or five per team. And spread out and see where the teams begin and end. And then stay in your teams for the next few sections. Okay, you guys have neon, your team. Your team has hydrogen. Yes. Your team has helium. You have carbon and you have sulfur. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go out to the interactive nucleus out in the lobby. So follow me, everybody, and bring your tile with you. The first team, if you'll stand over here by this chair, the first team. The second team, are, are you with the second team? You stand over by that blue garbage can. The third team, stand by this ladder. You guys come stand over by this machine. Don't, don't play with it yet. And then you got the last one, where do they go? The nucleus is the center of an atom. Can you make 
Okay. So now well, here's what we're going to do. This is called the interactive nucleus. And let's kind of open up the middle, stand on either side of the neutron or the proton so the camera behind you can see what you're doing. <coughs> this is called the interactive nucleus. And what it does is this table uh, can tell how many balls you put on it. And the red balls represent the proton. There's a thing over here to remind you. Blue balls represent the neutrons. And so you have a tile. Let me see your tile. You have one hydrogen three. And so you're going to, there's balls in the hopper down there. So you're going to figure out how many protons, how many neutrons you need. Put them on the table. When you all agree, hit the go button and see if you can do it. How many protons and how many neutrons do you need? You guys have been practicing. Yeah, How many protons? I know. Protons, we need one and two neutrons because protons. All right, so let's go ahead and grab them. Get one blue ball and get two. One red ball. One red ball. Because of one proton, two, two neutrons. Okay, so set them anywhere on the table. I'm sorry, you had me confused. That's okay. Now you can see this. I'm going to step out of the way so the camera can see too. You can see it has one proton, so that's hydrogen, but the mass is three. That's why the three is the addition of the two together. So are you ready? You guys all agree? Yeah. I hit the go button. Good job. You have made hydrogen three, also known as tritium. Tritium is a radioactive form of hydrogen that emits a beta particle. Now hydrogen three, is we actually uh, recycle it here in uh, uh, Aiken, South Carolina at the Savannah River site. And so that's what we, we make that here. Um, so hit the button again and we'll see the uses. Tritium is very there you go. rare in nature. However, tritium can be produced in nuclear reactors. Tritium is used for self-powered lighting and is used in watches, exit signs, and airport runway lights. Now, if you think about it, tritium is, tritium is used, used to make things glow, and so glow-in-the-dark watches glow from it, exit signs, uh, yeah, is it glows in the dark? Exit signs often, if you lose electricity, you want the light to light itself, so, uh, and same for runway lights, if you're in an airplane and the runway, or the airport loses power, you want to be able to land on that runway, and so the, air, the lights are self-powered using tritium. So go ahead and hit the button again. Many radioactive materials are used in medicine. We use to help to diagnose disease and to treat cancer. Now we use other items in medicine. You can see, and I'm going to go through a bunch of them. I'm going to go through them fast. So technesium, technesium 99. Technesium we use, and you can see this is a bone scan. We'll talk about that later. Technesium 99 provides gamma radiation that will come out of your body, so a special camera can determine the health of your bone. Thallium 2. Thallium 2 is for heart disease. A different one. Imaging. Indium 1. Indium 111 is used, um, used in medical imaging. for your liver, Indium spleen, and kidneys. Provides gamma iodine 131 and iodine 131 is for thyroid. You can see this image. So it can image your, to determine if you have iodine in you. And then you can also ca treat cancer with it as well. So you guys did good. So we're going to, huh? I think we're going to rotate the next team. We're ready. Helium 3 actually is the most expensive gas on Earth. It's actually produced. It's a, it, 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 it will, but the, so we're going to rotate. So what happens is the next turn, when he tells you to rotate, you're going to go to where these folks are. But watch Mr. S Dr. Sen, and we'll we'll rotate. So here's the rotation. Ready? We're going to rotate in this direction. Thank you, guys. Very good job. What tile do you have? So for 35, you got the biggest atom we're going to do today. And so we don't need your paper, but so this is called the interact nucleus. And let's stand on either side so the camera behind can see what you're doing because they're watching us on the web as well. The, this represents the nucleus. It's a bunch of holes. And so it's called the interactive nucleus. We have two colored balls. The red represent the protons. The blue represent the neutrons. And so you know what you have here, how many protons and how many neutrons do you have to do. You take the balls from the hopper, place them on the table. When you all agree that you have the right amount, you hit the go button and see if you did it. So, dear, so yours is sulfur 35. So how many protons? 16. How many neutrons? 19. I think that's correct. So let's get the um, balls and we can see. And put them on the table.
Okay. That's all right. You'll, they'll count in a minute. You got to get closer. So now, now count and see how many you got left. Seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One more. I count them. You guys count them and just see if you got it right. Got there. Got it. Now, now spread out so the camera can see and hit the go button when you're ready. Let's see if we did it. Good job. You did it. Sold for thirty-five. Sold for thirty-five. See, it's a big so atom. See how the, the nucleus is. It's radioactive. We, we had blue here, so it's a usable radioactive material. Hit go, and let's see what it's used for. Sulfur 35 is widely used as a radioactive tracer in many types of research. It's used in research. research they use it. And that's what sulfur looks like. It's the yellow. Hydrology research, sulfur in acid rain, industrial research, and sulfur content in the rubber of tires. So they use it for research. That's what it's used for. So let's... See what other isotopes we use. This only goes to potassium, so we'll have some slides on other items. Other nuclear materials are used to create. So we use nuclear materials to create electricity, and I'm going to go through this fast. This is here every day, so if you ever want to come and play with it, it's, it's here for you to play with. So we're going to talk about nuclear power. Nuclear fuels this is how nuclear power steam. is created. Steam turns a turbine. But in a nuclear fuels create steam. Nuclear power and there's how the uh, uh, uranium fissions. So we use uranium, we can use plutonium, and we use a lot of elements in there. We can use everything from boron, silver, indium, cadmium, cobalt, gadolinium, lots of different things. So we use a nuclear uh, power. So you guys did good. You guys had the, um, the most difficult atom. You did really good. Can I, and uh, I think I, thank you very much. We're going to rotate. We're ready to rotate, Gary. Did the, I had a, no, but no, you're going to return to the lot. You stay here when they rotate. Come, bring your disc over here. You guys have carbon 14. Now the camera's behind you, so we're going to kind of open up the middle so that the people on the web can see what you're doing as well. Now this is called the interactive nucleus, and you can see the name up here. And this represents a nucleus, and we have two different colored balls, and we don't need the paper on this one, but the, that's okay. The red represents protons, blue represents neutrons, and so you have carbon-14, so you have to figure out how many protons you need, how many neutrons, and you put the ping-pong balls on the table, and when you all agree, hit the go button and see if you did it. So go ahead. Down here? Sure. They're all down in the hopper down okay. below. So how many, how many protons do you need? Six. So how many neutrons do you need? Seven. No, five. No? no eight. Well, eight. You guys have to agree. Eight. Okay, good. So, the, so six red and eight blue. What would you do with the atom? Oop, I made I made a mistake. I didn't have it set up, so it's going to dump. We have to do it again. Sorry, that's my problem. All right, when it resets, we'll do it. Go ahead and get your balls though ready. So. Your ping pong ball's ready. All right, so I didn't have it set up for you. It's my fault. All right, so are we ready? Mm -hmm. This time it'll work. Good job. Open up Anything so the people can see. 14. This is carbon-14. You guys did it right. It's radioactive. Remember we said blue is a usable radioactive material. It does emit a beta particle. Let's see. Hit go, and we'll see what it's used for. Carbon-14 is a rare form of naturally occurring radioactive It occurs naturally from the sun. It's created by the sun's cosmic rays in the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon-14 is used to determine the age of organic materials up to 60,000 years old. Remember we said we earlier it's used for archaeology? So, and so, very good.
Now let's see some other things that we use um, radar materials for. Plutonium-238 is a special isotope that is now, often used for deep space for deep satellites. satellites. If, you wanna, if we send something to Saturn, it has to be powered typically by something really powerful to go that far, and plutonium-238 does that. So it, plutonium-238 plutonium also can also power a pacemaker in your heart. They did that in the 70s. They space don't space do it anymore, but they did. Some people have had a nuclear-powered heart. Some people had a nuclear-powered heart. Isn't that cool? Polonium-210 can, can be used for that. Power systems. Congratulations you guys on did good, Tom very good. Nucleus. So I think we're ready to rotate. You're gonna go, when you go, you're going to go to this station right over here by this table when he says rotate. So good job, ladies. What would you do with the Who has your tile? Come on over here. Who has the tile? I'll take it. So you have, now the camera uh, for the web is behind us, so we're going to let them, we'll stand on either side so they can see. We don't need paper for this exercise. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is called the interactive nucleus. You see the name up here. And this represents the nucleus. And we have ping pong balls. Red are represented by, or protons represent are represented by red, and neutrons are blue. And they're all in a hopper down below. And so what you can do is you have to figure out how many protons you need and how many neutrons you need, and we put them on the table here. And then when you all agree, we hit the go button and we'll go. So how many protons do you need? Three. You have two helium-3, so we want to make sure you think you have two protons. How many neutrons do you need? One. One. We all agree? So let's go. You need two protons and one neutron. All right, put them anywhere on the table you want. No. Oh my God! Just let it bounce. Uh, all in a line. The glue hold them together. Let so spread out so they can, so the you camera can see. Trees. You helium did. You made three of them. Form. It's green. Remember, we said that's stable, and so it is stable form of helium. Hit it again. We'll see what it's used for. Helium three is very rare. But it's very rare, boost. but we make it, it actually here in Aiken, South Carolina. It's the most expensive gas that I know of. It costs energy. a lot of money. It's like, Helium I think, two hundred to $300,000 per bottle. It's very to expensive. expensive. Terrorist activities. So we use it used in in, uh, for detectors for terrorist activities and for fusion reactors. It's really important stuff. So it's really interesting. And we make it here in, in Aiken, South Carolina. Go ahead and hit the uh, next Many button. Radioactive isotopes can be found in there are other radioactive materials you can find in your house. And so let's go through these slides real quick. The first one's gonna be potassium 40. Potassium 40 is found in our foods and it's also found in you. It's necessary for your muscles to work. Go ahead and hit it. Potassium 40 occurs naturally in all potassium. Is that you? Potassium is a It's my voice, yeah, that's diet. right. We made this that uh, uh, in 2010. Potassium 40 is naturally found so in fruits and vegetables. There's a lot, and uh, all, uh, a lot of potassium nuclear people from here help. Their voices are all on here. Your smoke detector has americium 241 in it. And that's uh, a radar material in your smoke detector helping save you, keep you safe. Go ahead. If you ever go camping, the glowing part of your lantern has thorium-232. It's radioactive, but it's, it's safe. Let Uranium, we make uh, ceramics out of it. So tiles, if you have bright cut tiles in your house or uh, bright colored uh, plates, older plates and some things, they, it actually has uranium in it. Next. You guys did really good. Thank you very much. We're gonna, we'll get ready to rotate. Okay, Gary, we're yeah, I, I, yeah, they, they have, they just, yeah, they, we're ready to rotate, we're ready. How many do you have? I have three, so there's one more. One more. All right, back to your stations, please. Back stations. I'll take that, I was looking for it earlier. <laughs> Thank you. So you're going to go to this station next. Thank you, y'all did, y'all did great. Thank you. Okay, the, the best team for last, right? Can I see your tile? All right, now the, the, the web camera is right behind you, so let's kind of keep the middle open so they can watch what you're doing. So with two on each side, it'd be great. That's all right. This is the interactive nucleus. You can see the name up here. We don't need the paper. The, um, the, this will be, be helpful to you, so it'd be better to hold, you, hold it. The interactive nucleus, this represents the nucleus. We have two color ping pong balls. The protons are represented by red. You can see the reminder there. The blue is representing the neutrons. So you have... 10 neon 18. Now, 
you take ping pong balls, you determine how many protons and neutrons you need, and you put them on the table. When you all agree, hit the go button and see if you made it. So how many protons do you need? Two, ten. Ten, and how many neutrons do you need? Eight. Not no, eight. Um, eight. Eight. Eight, very good, you guys caught it. So go ahead and, uh, I'll hold your paper and pencil if you want. So go ahead and let's, everybody can grab some ping pong balls and they're underneath in the hopper below. That's right. The, the protons are yep, we need 10 red and eight blue. So go ahead and put them in there. At some point, you have to start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No more blue, right? One, you're good. You're good, blue. One more red. Everybody agree? Do you have them? Before you hit go, let's look. You can see why. You know, let let the camera see because it's kind of pointing right behind. That's. That's. If you look here, remember we said ten is the number of protons and eighteen is the total number. You can see how that's how they add up. Tick, go and see if you did it. Wow, you have made neon, neon 18. 18. You did it. Very this good. It's radioactive. radioactive now remember, we said it, blue was radioactive. So, so let's emit a positron. Go ahead and hit go again. We'll see if there are any there uses. Are currently, no known uses for neon 18. Can you think of one? So there are no known uses right now because it only lasts for about two seconds. But if you guys can figure out one, it, it could be used in medicine or something for if we could figure out a way to do it, use it. But it's, it, and that's what science is always looking to find new ways, uses for isotopes, so really good. So go ahead and hit the button. Some radioactive materials have industrial uses. We're talking about agriculture, manufacturing, and construction. So where this is, we're gonna talk about manufacturing and construction uses. This only goes up to potassium, so we'll hit a few more. So we're gonna hit go. Cesium-137. The last one was agriculture, but we hit it twice. That's okay. That's okay. It's fine. And so we use it in manufacturing. We use it in agriculture. Are strong. And so you can go ahead again. Thallium-204 and Krypton-85 are all used to measure the thickness of plastic, metal, rubber, fabric, and paper. Very good. Californium-252. We use it in construction. Soil content for road and building construction. Make lightning rods better. Helps make lightning rods work better. Lanthanum 140, gold 198, iridium 192, and silver 110 are all used to help measure and understand soil erosion. Let's hit go again. Congratulations. You guys did a great job. So I think we're all done. So we're going to get ready to go back to our class. So let's, and this is here all the time. So you can, you can uh, come here on your, when you're not in school and play with it. It's here all the time. We're ready, Gary, when you are. Thanks, guys. Good job. Follow me. We're good. If you got five, I got five. We've got a few more minutes. We're going to cover some more slides, so go ahead and sit down. You guys did a great job on uh, the interactive nucleus, and it is, I told some of you, it's here all the time. You can come here and make your own isotopes all the way up to, I think, calcium is as big as it goes. And so it's, uh, it's a cool machine, and we, a lot of those uh, isotopes uh, are very usable, and they're used here in the CSRA, Central Savannah River area. So what we're going to do is uh, gonna show you, uh, the next slide is, uh, we're going to talk about our chart of the nuclides. Remember we talked about our periodic table? That's really made for chemists. It's based on electrons. And then the chart of nuclides is nu for nuclear folks. 
and it's a big slash. Remember we had the, the green slash down the middle of stable, and this one right here on the slide, it's a black line down the middle, and it goes all the way from helium up to past copernicium. And so the line down the middle are the stable. The multicolor ones are, um, are radioactive, and the red ones are very unstable. So you can, that kind of looks like the thing you made, right? We only went down here below calcium. We only did about a, an eighth of the whole table when we did it. If we had to do the whole thing, it would be in a gymnasium. It'd be here, we'd be here all day. This is actually the chart we use on our wall at work. That one big slash we break into thirds. So it starts over here with uh, hydrogen and goes up to helium. Potassium where we stop, I mean, uh, potassium where we stop is about right here. It keeps going and it goes up here and then it goes up here. So it's that one big slash cut into thirds. And so this is what we have on our wall at work and we use. It's pretty small writing, isn't it? So what we actually do is we have it broken into a book that's broken into about 100 pieces. Thank you, guys. And uh, we, this is what we use at work. So we have the different colors. On this, gray is the stable I, uh, isotopes instead of green. We just like the green bright color for when we do the thing so it stands out. So this is what we use at work. So it makes sense what an isotope is. It's just a... It's the same element, just a different mass because we vary the neutrons, and that's what nuclear people do. So we're going to talk about some application, and some of you saw this on the interactive nucleus, but we're going to make sure everybody gets, this, gets the same information. We use uh, nuclear materials um, uh, in all kinds of detectors that are used in uh, how much soda is in a drink or how much drink is in a bottle. Uh, we can determine explosive drugs or weapons like in suitcases and stuff in airports uh, or things like that. Insula putting the insulation on wires helps us determine sources of pollution or leaks in systems. We can determine termite damage using radioactive materials, the age of formerly living things. Who had carbon-14? Carbon-14 was archaeology. That's for age of formerly living things. And we use it for power for space exploration. One of the teams saw that with the deep space satellites. The, um, we use it in agriculture to help eradicate pests. We um, use it to um, uh, make things have better nutrition uh, to determine fertilizer uptake. We use it to irradiate foods. Almost all spices are uh, irradiated with radiation. It kills the bacteria on spices. If you wash a spice, you wash the flavor off of it. So it's not easy to wash, so we irradiate it so that the bacteria that could be on the plant are, are killed, so it's safe for you to uh, use. Um, you can do the same thing with ground meat, uh, chicken, beef, things like that, and you would eliminate things like salmonella as a food-borne uh, illness. Um, we use it for energy production. Um, uh, we use it to uh, boil water to make steam, to turn a turbine to make electricity. In South Carolina, over 50% of our power is produced by nuclear energy. That means if you have an electric car in South Carolina, you have a nuclear-powered car. If you have an electric car in mo most other states, you have natural gas or a coal-powered car. So it still emits uh, pollution. Nuclear does not. It's just if you have a, uh, a fossil fuel-powered car, it emits it somewhere else if you have an electric car. The consumer products. Uh, smoke detectors, some of you saw that. Smoke detectors have americium-241 in it, They're so it's helpful keeping you safe in your house. Uh, things that glow in the dark like watches, clocks, some signs like exit signs, they use tritium to help glow in the dark. Uh, we eliminate static electricity on computer disks, photo, photocopiers, things. If you use cosmetics or a contact lens solution, uh, we irradiate to eliminate bacteria in there so it's safe to put in your eyes so you don't get a, a, an eye infection. In uh, hospitals, over one-third of all uh, procedures is radioactivity. And so, and we'll show you some examples. This is a bone scan. Who in here would drink a concentrated drink of radioactive material? Anybody? Would now, what happens is this is a person who drank a drink of radioactive material, and the, the material goes to his bones, and the radiation comes out of his body. Instead of an x-ray going through his body, it's coming out of his body. He stands in front of a detector like this, and they can detect their bones. And it can detect very minute defects in your bones. And so before, the way they would tell, they had to cut you open to look. And you have surgery, and, and there, were, there were all complications with that. Would, the way this works, after just a little while, your body flushes all the fluid out of you, and it's, it's all gone. So they can take the image, and I have to cut you open. 
would you rather have surgery or drink the radioactive drink? Who would take the drink now? So, uh, and so what happens is it's reduced surgical diagnostic techniques by using these types of materials. They're very, very advanced. You see a lot of the new uh, machines in medicine utilize nuclear materials. We use it in industrial applications. We check welds on cars and airplanes to make sure they stay together when you're using them. So your airplane stays together when you're flying. We want to make sure those welds are good. We use radioactive materials. We use it in looking for oil and natural gas. We use it in uh, anything that needs thickness, like uh, aluminum foil, cans, you know, aluminum cans, uh, paper, um, things like that, saran wrap, all that type of stuff. You can, uh, we use uh, radiation detectors to detect how thick the materials are. Uh, and we use them in construction as well. That is the whole presentation. So I don't, I'm curious if you have any questions. Anybody have questions? The, um, the, this area of uh, the country has the largest concentration of uh, nuclear industry in, in the country. We have nuclear fuel plants, uh, in two of them in South Carolina. We have a nuclear fuel recycling plant in South Carolina. We have uh, I think uh, four new nuclear power plants being built within an hour of here. And so it's really, uh, there's a lot of good work uh, here and it's really interesting. We have a lot of medical uh, schools in the area and they use uh, nuclear materials. So understanding this will really help you uh, uh, if you want to go in those career fields. So it's, it's, uh, it's good information. So if there are no questions, I think Dr. Sen.